All right. Uh, those are the main uh, uh, numbers that he has thrown up, 5.3% uh, uh, compared to uh, the 5% that we did uh, last year. Uh, Mr. Bhatt, uh, what, what are your initial uh, um, impressions? Any number that stood out? Well, 5.3 itself is uh, highly debatable because uh, he is really talking of uh, manufacturing growth of uh, something like about 3%. Uh, the way the evidence doesn't suggest that manufacturing growth... 2.7% and uh, April to uh, uh, July, as you put it, it is 0 0.2. So, therefore, I think there is a lot of mileage to, uh, that we need to cover. Uh, that is, um, I mean, that is much more than extrapolation. Mm -hmm. And elsewhere, I think there are perils of extrapolation like, uh, uh, say, for example, uh, when we talk of IIP, uh, you know, it's very, very uh, tempting to extrapolate the IIP number that we got yesterday, but uh, I think there is a lot of pitfalls in that. You cannot really extrapolate uh, rubber conductor uh, yes, growth. I so therefore, I think th there are issues. Even, for example, uh, even in exports and imports, uh, imports, the compression that we have had in gold, that cannot be extrapolated. I think the festival season would uh, put pay to that uh, compression. Uh, plus, I think even exports, there was probably a, a limit, uh, an element of uh, one-time impact on account of sharp depreciation of the rupee, mm -hmm. which might not be sustainable. Uh, lastly, I think uh, on the FIA flows, I think that, that has been um, quite aggressive. Uh, mm -hmm. The assumption there has been quite aggressive because uh, and once tapering starts, uh, you know, assuming that FIA flows will continue is, is, is a bit of a uh, doubtful So that 2.7 plus could well be a minus number? Looks like there is, at least on the debt side. Uh, mm -hmm. On the debt side, I don't think incremental inflows is not uh, is something that we can really um, budget for. Plus also, I think outflows would happen because uh, where uh, on a fully hedged basis, there have been investments in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the debt market. Uh, once the tenor is over, I think that money would go out. Okay. Well, there are two states. The market actually uh, immediately at 11.05 after the speech began started falling. And I would perhaps uh, uh, attribute it to two statements. Uh, containing fiscal deficit could be a challenge is one statement. He makes uh, says fiscal gap at 4.8, considering that 62.8 percent of the fiscal deficit has already been uh, achieved. Uh, it's a little difficult. Then he goes on to say in the monetary policy, the current stance of monetary policy has to continue until stability in the rupee is achieved. Uh, again, indicating that if a man like him uh, uh, is indicating that uh, things are not going to ease anytime soon, the market uh, look, I think, at that also with a bit, bit of uh, despondence. Uh, uh, actually, we have uh, economist Aditi Nair of uh, Ikra also with us and Kiran Mazumdar Shaw. Uh, of uh, Biocon also with us. Uh, uh, Kiran, let me come to you. Uh, uh, Dr. Angarajan has assumed that investment rate will be 34.7 percent compared to the actual 35 percent forecast for last year. Uh, actually, we have been falling in terms of investment rate. We were at 36 up until 2010. We fell to 35 percent in FY12. This year, he has forecasted to come at 34.7. Do you think investment would be as good as last year or would it be much lower? Well, you know, Lata, it's very difficult to really comment on these uh, small differences, but I think we have to look at the broader picture. What are the signals we are really sending in terms of improving the investment climate in India? And I really think that's where we need to focus on, because right now the government is in a mode of assuaging the concerns and the panic that investors have in investing in India. Yes, at least to some extent, uh, Raghuram Rajan has brought in some kind of confidence uh, in terms of you know supporting the rupee at a, at, a, at a stable rate but for how long because we need to do many many other things to basically address both the fiscal deficit and the CAD now I'm not so sure that the government is doing enough that is my concern you know what are the various measures that we are actually in, invoking to kickstart the economy and, and boost investment so unless we do that, we are not going to see more investment coming into this country. We are still sort of falling way short of really going the whole way in, you know, attracting investments. Uh, Lata, I just want to ask you one question, you know, uh, talking about the uh, capital flows, uh, uh, you know, uh, they are talking about a deficit of $70 billion and projecting $61 billion and about $8.9 billion depletion. Mm. But within that, what's interesting is the FI uh, mm. inflow that they are projecting because for the first half of this year, there is net outflow, mm. equity plus debt, uh, 
and for the next half, you know, they are expecting uh, quite a bit of inflows. Uh, uh, should the market be a bit worried about that and that arithmetic uh, in terms of financing the deficit, which has been the concern? I think uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Bhatt answered that eloquently. He began by saying that uh, that is the most skeptical number of all the numbers put out. Uh, to be fair to Dr. Rangarajan, it's also the most difficult one to guess. But uh, uh, logically, when the currency is under pressure, uh, and when there is a tapering on the anvil, and when you know that debt which will anyway be held to maturity would redeem, would get redeemed and go, uh, perhaps this year we have to brace ourselves for a net outflow. I think all indications are to that effect. But uh, you know, yes. there is no, no law against being bold, uh, <laughs> so, so therefore I think that is fine. Uh, I mean, uh, all estimates uh, have to have to factor in some amount of uh, um, you know estimation. Mm. So therefore, I think that that is fine. But otherwise. Uh, on a very practical basis, I think an outflow is something that we should be, we should uh, budget for. Yeah, and uh, maybe banking capital is put in at 18 billion compared to 16 billion last year. If we were very lucky uh, and those FCNRB numbers come looking good because of the uh, SOPs given as well as banks being allowed to raise overseas bonds to the extent of uh, uh, tier 1, the entire tier 1 capital, that means just doubling the amount of money they can raise, uh, even that could bring. So maybe what you lose in uh, FII, Anuj, you could get in banking capital. That is a difficult uh, terrain uh, to guess. And, uh, um, uh, you know, that also could be a make or break number if it really is an outflow. Uh, but uh, let's get Aditi Nair in. Aditi, your first impressions, which is the number that looks most believable and least believable? Well, I think uh, the numbers look a little bit optimistic to me. Uh, the 5.3% growth number does seem to be a uh, little bit uh, higher than what we are uh, penciling in. At present, we are looking at around 49 to 5.1% growth for this year, so a little bit higher on the growth side. Uh, particularly, I wouldn't, uh, you know, attach too much importance to yesterday's uh, surprising uh, IIP uh, number. I think, uh, you know, we have a very volatile component within the IIP that's really led to the positive growth. So the sustainability of the capital goods number itself is a little bit uh, uh, doubtful at this point in time. And without that, we would have had a very, very mild uh, improvement on the IIP side in July. So I think that is a, uh, something that we need to uh, take into account. Also, uh, what really is uh, becoming a concern at this point in time is if we are looking at a situation where revenues are going to fall short of Government of India's budget estimates and fuel subsidies are going to overshoot, uh, you know, particularly on the fuel side uh, with uh, the extra amount that's already been penciled in for last year, are we really looking at a compression of capital expenditure from government departments in the second half of the year? Because that is something that could... Uh, you know, really uh, wash away a lot of the uh, positive uh, uh, impact that we're expecting to come in from uh, agriculture and uh, the rural uh, demand as well as exports. So I think there are still some concerns on, uh, you know, how the overall uh, growth number is going to uh, play out. Uh, we are looking at a slightly lower number, very close to what we saw last year, despite the positive impact of agri and exports. Okay. As far as, uh, you know, uh, yeah. the current account deficit is concerned, I think uh, we are working with a number of $75 billion. We do feel that we need to account, uh, allow for some resumption in uh, gold imports, particularly with the yeah. festival and wedding season yeah. coming up ahead. Yeah. So $75 billion, again, slightly higher than what they penciled in. Yeah. Okay, Aditi, I'll come back to you with more uh, or with more questions. Uh, Pranav Sen, former Principal Advisor, Planning Commission and of course uh, uh, former Chief Statistician is with us. Uh, 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 Dr. Sen, uh, what's your sense about uh, uh, this 2.7% industrial growth? Uh, I mean, we have, uh, the average April to August is just 0.2% and as we discussed in the morning, 2.6% uh, industrial growth for uh, July is largely because of that one item uh, uh, cables and uh, uh, rubber insulated cables coming in very big. Uh, you know, if your first five months or first four months is 0.2, will we make it to 2.7% industrial growth? Well, you know, that's, that's tough to say. I mean, basically, if you uh, do a fairly simple exercise, which is you take a moving average on the capital goods sector, which is the sensible way of going about it, uh, the average growth would uh, would be uh, around around half a percent over the the, the first bit of this year. Uh, so it's it's not that too bad. Um, whether we'll be able to get up to 2.7 is, of course, an open question. Um, my sense of it is that as far as the corporates are concerned, I think you will see it primarily because of the resumption of exports. Uh, but the more important issue is what's happening to the SME sector. 
Uh, as I've been saying earlier, uh, my belief is that the civil sector last year and in the first half of this year mm. uh, performed much better than the corporates. But there is evidence that uh, even that is slowing down a bit. Mm. So net net, it's it's very difficult to say uh, where we'll be. But I would tend to think that we'll probably be somewhere in the five to five and a half percent region. Okay. Uh, well, the other point that uh, Dr. Angarajan made was that savings rate. It has been falling for the past uh, several years, uh, right, uh, Dr. Sen? I think from uh, FY9, we are seeing savings rate fall. Yep. Last year's was 30.2. He has factored in 31% this year. You think we'll get there? Uh, um, uh, there there's, uh, is there that much uh, evidence of savings turning? Well, I mean, let's be very clear. I mean, uh, look, there have been two major causes for the fall in the savings rate. The first and most obvious, of course, is government. Uh, where you've had a huge decline from uh, you know, plus uh, about nearly 1% to a minus 3%, 3.5% in fact. Uh, the second has been the complete collapse in, in corporate savings. Household uh, savings have, have gone up and, and it actually have increased a bit. So, you know, if you really look at the, the savings story in India, uh, the real story that we need to tell is about public savings. As far as corporates are concerned, Corporate savings will come roaring back the moment that corporate India starts seeing investment opportunities happen. What they'll do is they'll cut back on dividend payments and will simply uh, keep the money as retained earnings. Mm. So I don't worry that much about the savings part of it per se okay. unless household savings are going down. Mm. And uh, that, that, yeah, that, as you point out, has seems to have turned the corner. We saw it rise from uh, 7.5 to 7.7 percent. So hopefully, uh, the corner has been turned. Uh, Doctor Sen, please stay with us. Uh, um, Ekta is also joining us. Uh, uh, Ekta, you have a question for Ms. Mazumdar. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mrs. Shaw, thanks for joining in uh, this morning. I just wanted to focus on the export bit because that's been spoken about as to be one of the key growth drivers for the rest of the fiscal. Do you see a formidable increase in exports simply because of the repeat depreciation? And what would your estimates uh, possibly be with uh, your interactions with the industry? Well, certainly I think a weak rupee does augur well for exports and certainly we are all seeing our exports, uh, you know, becoming more and more competitive. So I think from that point of view, it is good for the export uh, component of, uh, you know, the corporates. Um, and of course, we must remember that, uh, you know, being in the manufacturing sector, uh, there is an import uh, impact uh, in this as well in terms of a weak rupee, but the net net impact is positive, at least for Biocon, certainly it is very positive. So I think exports uh, is something that we are going to really focus on and drive and take advantage of uh, the weaker rupee uh, going, you know, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, I think industry across the board is also taking advantage of this and I certainly think the the services sector is certainly going to benefit a lot from a weak rupee. Okay. Uh, so that is my take on, on, on the export sector. Well, that's quite positive because actually... But having said that, I just... Yeah, it is positive, but I also wanted to just mention here that the Commerce Ministry has, uh, you know, uh, called for um, tax benefits on incremental exports. Uh, in the DTA region, but I really believe they should extend this to SEZ as well mm. because I think this is the way to boost exports and boost investment Ms. if you are looking for uh, investment. Well, uh, uh, Kiran, I doubt that it, that is uh, on the government's radar now because reaching the 4.8% fiscal deficit as Dr. Angarajan himself said is going to be extremely difficult. Uh, I mean, look at their tax revenues. They base their budget on 6.1 to 6.7% uh, real GDP growth, an average of 6 0.4 percent real GDP growth, and the official, the person, the economist advising the uh, prime minister is saying that it is 5.3. So tax revenues itself is going to take a huge break. Uh, 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 therefore, at this point, tax ops perhaps will be a little tough. But it's important and encouraging that you say service exports also will do well. You know, the kind of tax ops I'm talking of, 
the, that kind of tax ops I'm talking about are not going to be, uh, you know, making such a huge okay. uh, impact on on these kind of targets. I just think it sends the right signals Fair because enough. I think we are talking about incremental exports. You know, we are not. No. And so we are talking about the delta between last year's exports and, point, and this year's exports. And I think if you've already announced it for the DTA, I don't see why you are excluding EOUs and SEZs. Fair point. Uh, um, I, I assume uh, uh, that will be mulled because there is a concerted effort uh, to increase uh, exports. Uh, in fact, uh, the point I was trying to make is that they have given services 6.6% uh, growth estimates compared to 7.1% last year. And very importantly, that big item in services, which is called trade, hotels, uh, transport and communication, which includes, you know, everyone like your Panwala, your Marks and, up to your Marks and Spencer, uh, you know, your ST buses, that entire transport and communication, that turned in a very poor 3.8% uh, in first quarter. But uh, Rangarajan's uh, team is expecting that that will grow to about 5.5% for the full year. So that also looks a little ambitious. Uh, uh, well, Dr. Sen, finally uh, a question to you. Where do you stand on GDP? I mean, Dr. Angarajan has come down to 5.3% uh, from an official uh, estimate of uh, well over 6%. And all the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, non-government, uh, if, if you please, economists we speak to, are somewhere between 2.7 and 5, with a significant uh, uh, portion closer to even 4. Where do you stand? I mean, what is the uh, believable uh, number? Well, you know, again, the, we, we need to be careful. You just mentioned that the number that has come out for trade uh, hotels and restaurants um, has been very low. Okay? Uh, but you must remember the way the quarterly figures are generated, this particular item is derived almost entirely from the corporate uh, uh, financial accounts, right? Now, in the Indian context, trade hotels and restaurants have a complete dominance by the non-corporate sector, uh, which is simply not getting picked up. So, my view, and I, I think Rangarajan and his group have, have done something similar, would be that this would probably be much closer to 65 to 7%. Uh, I just want to ask. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Okay. Uh, just, just want to uh, ask the economist here. Uh, Aditi, you know, uh, the the comment coming in is that uh, if currency had not depreciated, uh, we would have seen rate cuts by now. Uh, uh, how do you think monetary policy is now going to pan out? Uh, Given the fact that you know we went to 68, have stabilized a bit. Going forward, what do you think would be the monetary stance? No, I think first of all, of course, we have the FOMC meeting next week, and that we have to take into account what is actually announced in that meeting before we can go ahead and look at our projections. Uh, for, you know, in terms of what the monetary policy outlook is likely to be for the rest of the year. Having said that, I think one concern that uh, we still have at present is that we are looking at a situation where there is a possibility that domestic political uncertainties and global events can again lead to situations where we have sporadic, uh, you know, periods of uh, FII outflows, and those can be quite uh, destabilizing as far as overall sentiment is concerned. And particularly for, uh, you know, the near term overshooting of the rupee, I mean, that still remains a major risk factor. So possibly the best case scenario we are expecting at this point in time is that uh, we will have a status quo on uh, monetary policy as far as rate cuts are concerned in uh, September and possibly in uh, Q3 as well. And uh, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, there could be a likelihood of, uh, you know, mild rate cuts in uh, Q4. Uh, to really be able to get uh, growth back on uh, the uh, uh, front corner. All right. Uh, I think that's uh, the view coming in from uh, all our experts. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw also saying that uh, unless you see some concrete steps to increase investment, maybe the number we are looking at is a little tough. Uh, uh, Dr. Sen, Aditi, Gaurav, uh, 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 Ms. Shaw, thank you very much for joining in this discussion. Ms. Shaw, if you can request you to stay on a little, we have other questions on Biocon as well for you. Uh,
Uh, just to wind up, uh, the main uh, takeaways from Dr. Namarajan have been that he expects uh, GDP growth at 5.3%. This is the first uh, official statement coming from the government on definitely lowering its GDP estimate uh, because its uh, budget estimates were pegged at uh, something like 6.5%. Uh, so there will have to be some concomitant reductions in expectations on tax revenue growth and I am sure Rangarajan's document has it but you have to just get into those 86 pages of uh, data that he has put out. We have only gone through the highlights. Uh, the important point he is making on current account deficit is that it will be 70 billion but there will be 61 billion of inflows. That's a debatable number especially on the FIA front but that's difficult to guess. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we are just getting flashes from our senior editor uh, uh, Siddharth Zarabi who is over there. He has been speaking to uh, Saumitra Chaudhary and uh, uh, asking him about the current account deficit. Uh, Siddh uh, Dr. Chaudhary believes that current account deficit could even go down to 50 to 60 billion. That means they are expecting a fairly sizable fall in crude and other imports uh, uh, and gold and as well expecting exports to do very well uh, if what Kiran Mazumda Shah had to say then that export uh, assumption may be right but really can we keep gold imports down at a time when we are heading into a festive season and when the rupee value of gold is not really going down uh, all those would be questions but uh, it is on that bullishness uh, on current account deficit uh, that uh, the, the uh, PMEAC is basing itself the markets fell when perhaps those statements about uh, uh, monetary tightness continuing came in but after that uh, they have remained unruffled uh, they are back to about uh, 0.2 to 0.3 percent higher so the markets have taken this as one other estimate uh, which they looked at maybe took a good look and then uh, it is business as usual for the market so it should be business as usual for us we'll take a break and be back Kiran, Mazum Kiran Mazumdar Shaw is also with us